Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mackenzie Chriswell here. Welcome back to another brand new video. Today we're taking a look at a really cool app uh, called uh, Final Cut Library Manager. Yeah, got it right. All right, so anyways, not too long ago, I made a uh, video on my YouTube channel uh, about basically the process that I use to back up uh, old Final Cut projects. I edit uh, primarily in Final Cut, so I spend a lot of time backing up these projects, and I had found a system that uh, worked really well for me. Uh, it basically involved going into individual Final Cut projects and, uh, you know, like right-clicking and really getting into the project and just deleting the bits of the project that didn't need to be there, um, you know, to archive a project. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of extra media that are stored in these Final Cut projects, that, and if you get in there and get rid of a lot of it, you know, you can save a lot of room on the backup. And this was a good process, and that's probably why I made a video about it, but now that I know there's a better way, it just seems, like, draconian. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about the app. This is a cool app called uh, Final Cut library manager um it's a pretty simple task that it does though it does have some more uh, advanced built-in features but uh honestly I, I, this is probably the f my favorite app on my mac at the moment uh so so let's just get into it um uh basically when you're saving a final cut project the only things you need to keep are the project files themselves and the original media files for the project so that you can go in and edit them later. That's a pretty small amount of the project. Final Cut also stores a lot of other things like transcoded media. It likes to convert everything to ProRes because it plays really nicely with that format. Um, but ProRes files are gonna take up a larger space, uh, if nothing else, because they're just an additional copy of the files you already have. So if we take a look at the app, you can see most of my projects here basically have zero kilobits of wasted space and that's because for the longest time I've actually been going in and manually cleaning up these project files. Obviously I do have a dummy file set up here. This is a project that I was doing earlier today and whenever I was importing the media it's not a huge file it's just 1080p but it is like a full length like two and a half hour movie um, but I also told Final, Final Cut to go ahead and create uh, you know optimized media and some proxy media even though I canceled that process halfway through because it was just gonna take way too long. You can see we have a nice little logo up here telling us that this is a project that's in use. So before we wanna go ahead and get editing, just to make sure we're going on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and quit this uh, project here, just so that uh, we're not taking any risks. Okay, um, so now we have a list of basically every Final Cut project on this particular drive that I'm taking a look at, and uh, we can view these uh, the size of our projects um, basically as a you know in, in an individual state, so we can see how how much of our project is files that we actually need, the gray material here, which is our original media and project files, and then we can see how much of our project is optimized media, which is the blue, how much of it is proxy, which is the uh, the purple, of course, and then how much of the project is uh, actually render files, uh, which is the green. None of these are things that we actually need in order to archive the project. Um, we can also just view all of the projects um, proportionally. Um, so in my case, it's a little weird because I have one just massive dummy project that I set up here. Uh, we'll have to come back to that in a sec. Um, but basically the way that the app works is it's really easy. Uh, by default, this is actually a free app. Um, but you can only use it to catch mistakes that you made, you know, files that you haven't actually deleted, which is great because these other, you know, four, actually five projects where I still have media that can be removed, uh, I, these weren't dummy projects. These were uh, Final Cut projects that were sitting on my archived hard drives. You know, I'd already made a backup of them, and I thought I had already removed all the extra media. But you can see I have well over like two gigs, well, actually pretty close to like two gigs of extra media that I could get rid of that I just didn't notice. So if we go ahead and just check all the boxes here to get rid of all of our proxy media, all of our optimized media, all of these render files, and then just go ahead and hit this button down in the corner, it's going to clean our libraries. I'm going to delete them completely. And now we're going to have much smaller file sizes. Uh, do keep in mind here that if you keep an additional backup like I do and like I recommend that you do, you are going to have to copy this file again over to your hard drive, your second hard drive or your backup hard drive. Uh, of course, you can avoid that by just running things through this app before you get ready to go. This is the dummy project that I had set up for the tutorial. You can see I've basically got two uh, different 
uh, timelines here that I was working on. Uh, anyways, I'm just gonna check and delete all this optimized media, proxy media, render media, and you can see my file size, once I clean it out, just as an example, in the original video I made, my file size, you know, the dramatic file size that I had made the dummy up to do, went from about 20 gigs to a little over a gig and a half, and, uh, <laughs> oh wow, this one went from, uh, well over 500 gigabytes to, uh, just under three, so, uh, what... What is going on with Outlook? Okay, now that we have all of our files cleaned up, again, if we take a look at kind of the proportional scale, uh, we can see basically how the files rack up compared to one another. Um, so we can see which of our projects are kind of the bigger ones. This, uh, you know, movie edit that I was doing earlier is a, one of the larger projects I've done. Actually, I think it is the largest one on my hard drive at the moment. Again, I tend to have these sorted by my most recently modified Final Cut files so that I can, you know, always make sure that I have them all clean and, you know, my most recent projects are just gonna show up at the top. You can also sort them by size, you can sort by name, and you can sort by potential space savings. There's a few other things that the app can do. You can add comments to Final Cut Pro files here, which is basically just metadata. Um, like I said, if you are using this app uh, to, you know, as a precursor to archiving your projects, you can actually save yourself a little bit of time and actually move files, you know, from where you may be editing them. Usually I edit on my hard drive and then back up to other drives. Um, so this is just gonna be a really great app to kind of try to work into your archiving process. It's gonna be able to handle a lot of the load itself or, or also is just gonna help you clean up files a little bit faster. If you don't wanna pay for the paid version, uh, which is a little pricey, it's around 20 bucks or $30, depending on which version you buy. Um, so whether you pay for it or not, this is a really great app. Definitely think everyone should be trying to find a way to work this into their, uh, you know, archiving process. Anyways, uh, you know, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll see you next time.